what I'd like to do is just put forward a position for debate really, which is that we've got a very large talent pool within the UK, but we're just not tapping into it as well as we could be. Now, in terms of our current population of STEM people, uh, only 10% uh, are women and only one in five uh, people studying physics A levels, which is one of those critical precursors uh, to moving into STEM careers, are women. I'm constantly surprised that the numbers around gender representation don't seem to budge. It's such an important issue and if you look at so much of the research, it, there are many, many root causes. What I would like to do is just share a couple of different stories with you about some of the challenges I think we face in order to get there. So I went to an event at a great girls school and I overheard a girl, young woman, talking to her mother and said, oh, I'd like to go and chat to BP. And the mother said, oh, darling, you really don't want to do that. Oil and gas is so dirty. And that, for me, was the size of the scale of challenge that we're dealing with. And I think in order to overcome that, we absolutely need to encourage that education and aspiration amongst women generally about this being a, a career. I can remember studying in the 90s and listening to this discussion. I suspect there'll be people in this room who can say, well, in the 80s we had this discussion, in the 70s we had this discussion. We are failing, potentially, or we risk failing, yet another generation of people. When you start telling a story about, well, this is actually what engineering is, it doesn't necessarily mean that you get in blue overalls and covered in grease. The diversity that sits behind engineering careers is, is absolutely massive. And, and once you start telling that story to young people, it's very compelling. But we, we really need to find better ways of, of getting that story uh, across. How do we talk to that generation of, of female students in a way that's not condescending and patronising, um, but equally isn't stuffy and dull? I spoke to a friend of mine who runs resourcing in a major pharmaceutical firm and they've actually done a great job of encouraging <coughs> strong women into research and development. And I said, Serena, you know, how have you done it? What, what, what's been the lever? And she went, oh, it's been really easy. We picked a strategy 10 years ago and we stuck to it. And that, I think, is, is a really important lesson for all of us in this room and for UK PLC more generally. Because I think we have so many initiatives which chop and change. And actually, I think we need to get quite focused on a particular approach and stick with that. It's not a straightforward problem to solve. And what I like about the pharma example is rather than saying the problem's too big, I don't know where to start, it's actually starting somewhere. So you could say, oh, the media kind of representation of female scientists is all wrong. They're either kind of bimbos or geeks. or So, so you can start by, by creating such a large-scale problem that actually I think you miss that you need to start mm. somewhere. It's about government, it's about education institutions like Aberdeen University where we are today and organisations such as companies working together to collaborate, innovate and to inspire a generation of people to take on subjects that perhaps have not been as well marketed or as attractive as they could have been. How do we understand what the issues are, face up to the challenges and think very clearly about solutions? Thank you.